It's pretty good so far. Tiff, what do you think? Hey, Tiff. Yes? Hey, I just wanted to show you this new thing I got for the van. It's a Ooh. van tooler gear. Wow. Yeah. Special. Right? Uh, this is uh, my dirty laundry. Mm. And you see it's waterproof, Tiff? Mm-hmm. And you know the reason for that? Why? It's not to keep the water out. It's to keep the stink in. Mm. That's right. This is a 20 liter bag. I think this will be due. Uh, this will be sufficient for the amount of dirty laundry that I should have on the road in a week. And the cool thing I like about it is that it's totally waterproof. I could throw this in a river and it would float. And it'll keep the stink in. And it's got these cool little handles on it, or uh, backpack things. It's a backpack, right? So I can take this to the laundry mat and kind of blend in. And it won't stink. Because you know what? The stink in a small little area in the van, yeah. 150, 100 square feet, yeah. it fills like one dirty sock, one wet sock from the previous day will stink up the entire van. And that's what I learned from my last van trip. So this is what I'm doing. Pretty cool. Good yeah. job. Woohoo! Hey, I got a new camera. This is the Canon G7 Mark II. I used to have the Sony RX100, and that was a great camera. That was the first one inch megapixel sensor on the market. Um, but I ended up getting some dust uh, lodged in the lens. If you look at some of my older videos, you'll see these permanent spots. I think it's from when I put it in my pocket and some pocket lint lodged its way in there. So I think it was time to upgrade anyways. I got that back in probably 2010 maybe 2012 and um so far they've come out with like so many new features um i really like it. i really like this fold down screen so that i can uh frame myself when i'm doing my selfie vlogs for you guys so i'll have a cool background when i'm talking one of the problems that i had with my last camera is that i got the screen scratched too and i think that's just because i had some keys maybe in my pocket I think the key to this is always, I think the key is to not put a key in your pocket and um, always keep that pocket for the electronic alone. Decided to have a little bit more protection. I've got this glass screen protector. Tiffany is shopping for some new flowers for the flower bed. We're looking at these. Yeah, the white ones are nice. And then the yellow ones, but I like these. These POCs right here, these plants of color. I think these would look nice on the front flower bed. <laughs> Tiff, you ask, what did I get? I got an Oreo. Tiff's not down for that Thai tea. Oh, that is literally Chinese bubble tea, but this is not a bubble tea. This is like an Oreo in it, and it's the diabetes special. Got him! Ooh, spooky. Where are we? Where do you think we are? Well, wherever we are, it's outside of the Splunk offices. Hmm, where are we? Do you guys know? It has the, the name Winchester in it. We're at the Winchester Haunted Museum. The Winchester House. This is, we just walked through the house and they didn't let us film anything until right now. And then there's gonna be a Winchester movie that comes out in 2018. And, and I was used, I, they used me as one of the prop men here, right? I get to volunteer. Okay, let's go. All these Winchester guns, different caliber. Well, they're mostly 44 caliber, 45 caliber. Y'all shoot your eye out. Y'all shoot. Tiff, I got my sights on this one. If I was going to choose this gun, because this one has the aiming thing on it. I got my sights on it. Get it? Thank you. This is the most guns I've ever seen in California because California bans guns. You want this little pea shooter in your purse? Oh, no, we're putting that in your purse. Your purse is big enough. I can fit that in there for protection. These different guns, 348 caliber. My dad used to say something about there being an elephant gun, but then when I grew up, I realized there's no such thing as an elephant gun. It just means like a really big caliber gun. 
when I was done any pheasant hunting. Oh my god, that's how you, yeah, you finish the pheasant off with that. <laughs> you know? I don't pheasant. know why there's a big pheasant, knife. No, that's a US my, that is insane. Military, so you, military. yeah, so you you blast them at short range with a shotgun and yeah. then you stab them when you run out of bullets. No, Tiff, you can't have one. You'll shoot your eye out. <laughs> so what do they do here? They do some green screen so it looks like your head got cut off. Talk about how I, I they call me Nick the Great in there. <laughs> that was my name. I had to live up to it. Nick the Great. Fear of the Republic of California, where borders mean nothing. Unlimited immigration. Alright, back to the vlog. Updates for the trip. Got a new tube put in the, the tire there because it was a slow leak. It's just annoying and it only cost $18, I think, to have them replace it with a new tube. I could have done it myself, but I'm just, I just need to get on the road at this point. And then now I'm just at my uh, favorite barber shop, and so I'm going to go and get a haircut. Turn the world around you easier than ever. At Miracle Ear, we take the time to get to know you so we can ensure you hear what's most important in your life. Our here all right, all right. Got the haircut out of the way. I love this barber because he uses a straight razor and goes down your neck, gets all the little hairs, and does a really good job. So I bought this four terabyte external hard drive and it doesn't have like its own power source. It's just powered off the USB 3 cable. And um, I wanna make this sort of a permanent installation on my Mac. So what I'm gonna do is mount it right here. Cut the Velcro to size. I'm going to use one of these little Velcro uh, ties that I got. I ordered a whole bunch of these off of uh, Amazon. Yeah, they come in real handy. Alright, and then just plug it in here. Boom! Permanent external hard drive. I ain't going anywhere. Okay, so I'm testing this new uh, laptop powering setup that I've got here. I'm um, just seeing how long it can run on this battery for without giving me problems. Right now you can see it's uh, charged up to 100%. And I'm using this new uh, USB-C. These new MacBook Pros run on, uh, their power is USB-C. So I've got one of these anchor cables in here. I really like the quality of these. They cost a little bit more, but uh, they're definitely more durable. So what makes this possible is through this anchor cable, trace this back. And there's a 12 volt. I found this um, Amazon. Found this on Amazon. It's a 12 volt um, car cigarette lighter adapter uh, that out, outputs a USB C connection and it delivers 45 watts. Uh, this laptop should have about 65 watts, I think is the stock uh, charger that comes with it, but uh, it will uh, power and recharge my battery in the laptop just fine. Right now it's reading a it's got a little voltage indicator on there, 11.9. I'm getting 12.1 on this one, and then yet yeah, this one is at 14.6. So it's kind of all over the place. I don't know what to trust. And right now the fan is running. There was a one of the wires got kicked out of there and disconnected, so um, I had to re-solder it in there. I soldered it this time, and um, you can see I uh, covered with some duct tape over the positive terminals. That was really a fire hazard. This also is a fire <laughs> hazard. This is um, negative and uh, positive terminals. If I cross anything metal across those, that's gonna create a nice spark and possibly a fire, so I gotta be careful. Also my propane tank in the back, I need to enclose that and then drill a hole because propane is heavier than air, sinks to the floor, and if there is a leak, I want it to fall through that hole and outside the vehicle. So, yeah, I got my fan reconnected here. You can hear it blowing. So I just turned it off. But yeah, I think I'm about ready to hit the road here. Just 
So yeah, this is going to be my last day here and I plan to leave tomorrow. It's just the sun has just been so much. It's like hard to work in. Um, it was 85 degrees today, 85 degree weather in direct, uh, in direct sun. So, so I'm going to work during the night and just try to get out of here tomorrow morning. Just a few last minute projects. I could do this at my brother's house, but I've got uh, my hot glue gun and I've got this uh, high temperature glue in here that really, sticks really well. I've got my neodymium magnets. These are the good kind of magnets, the strong ones. And I've had a problem with these uh, coming off here. So I'm gonna just super glue, hot glue some of these in here so it stays better. Okay, I just hit record uh, and then filled the whole segment of this unboxing of the Norco and you guys get to see the very end because the recording failed. That's like the 10th time. I lose so much video because I don't hit that stupid record button. But here it is. This is um, the uh, Norco, how do you pronounce it? I want to say Norco, but it's Norco Genius. Uh, this is the 26 amp version. And my last one was a SeaTac and it was only seven amps. So it would have taken to charge my about 500 amp hour batteries uh, bank four batteries, AGM, it would have taken a couple days. At least this one should be about 24 hours. Um, let's see how it goes. Don't go to the lake of fire. Turn back to God. They <laughs> the Holy Spirit Christ. You camera off me. I know what you're doing. Isn't that creepy, too? It's really creepy. We were just at, at dinner. We were talking about how on the last two trips, something bad has happened, right? The first trip. I broke my arm, my wrist, and then on the second trip, you broke your ankle, and I'm going on a third Mine was trip. A bit worse than you. <laughs> you keep saying that, and then, <laughs> right, Yeah, you didn't have to have two surgeries. And then I'm going on this trip, and something bad might happen, right? No. So we're driving down the street, and you see uh, there's someone holding a sign in a window, and you're like, "Oh, that's so creepy! That the the Mexican place is closed." And this person is, you know, standing there with their sign. And then we were like, I'm like, what? So we go around the block. I drive back around the block. And then we look for the person. They're totally gone, right, Tiff? And then, so we just drive home. And as we're pulling into where we live, this person is right in, is right in front of the driveway of where we live. And they're holding a sign that says, repent or go to hell. Repent your sins or go to hell. And then they start walking down the road here Many chanting. Many their sins separated from God. Chanting. They're going to go straight to hell. I don't know where your soul is going, but if you're sinning, you better stop because we are in judgment with Jesus. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Check yourself. Too long. So here's this new belt that I got. Find the right um, length. These are pretty cheap on Amazon. I think it's like twelve dollars per. And they come in a few different colors. Tiff thinks they look really ugly, but I'm all about utility, so I really dig these. Um, you can cut them to a custom length that you need, and they're really good for uh, travel because I guess they're TSA friendly, which means they don't have any metal in the buckle. So, no need to do a strip tease in the TSA line. Tip. The reason I like this belt is because you can do these, like, sort of increment adjustments versus, like, a hole. You have to go, like, a whole inch or whatever for your adjustment. This gets just a, a just right snug feel, depending on the clothing you're wearing. So, it's great. I love this belt. Real cheap and durable. I will say the only downside to this for me is that this buckle is pretty wide and when I bend over my big gut protrudes and gets kind of pinched in there. So what I like to do is just push this over to the side a little bit, all good, and then that way when I bend over it's not that big of a deal. I've got a scratch on my glasses again. In March I had the lenses replaced because of a bad scratch and they were great for a while but I got scratches on them. And I treat them the way that you should never wipe them on your shirt, your cotton shirt, to clean them. Only wash them with water and some uh, dish soap, not a citrus soap. Use a microfiber cloth to, I'm hearing, what I'm reading is pat it down, wipe it along the surface because that can cause a scratch. I've got scratches in my lenses again, so I need to replace them. I'm starting to think there's some sort of conspiracy here. Maybe they 
give you these glasses that scratch easily so that you go get them returned. I know that there's this whole hardness index. You've heard of like Gorilla Glass on phones. Remember the first generation phones? They scratched really easy and then they came up with Gorilla Glass. So there's this whole like hardness scale from 1 to 10 and I'm wondering what these polycarbonate glasses, what their hardness number would be. I haven't found that information anywhere but I am reading that more often than not the coatings that you get on them scratch. So for instance I purchased the anti scratch coating and that seemed to scratch easy. What I'm reading is from the eyeglass store a lot of customers return their glasses with scratches most frequently it's the actual coating that gets scratched. So on my next pair of glasses I think I'm gonna skip the scratch resistant coating. In addition there's different types of glass they have CR39, polycarbonate, and Trivex. Polycarbonate is from the 1970s. The Trivex is from uh, early 2000s. The Trivex is supposed to be more clear. There's less glare. It's a clearer lens. And it's debatable whether it's more scratch resistant, but it, it does provide more clarity, and it does cost more. Uh, so I think when I get my next pair of glasses, I'm just gonna skip all the coatings and see how I fare with that. I'm gonna get the Trivex glasses, if I can find them. I called my optometrist, and they weren't sure that they sold those. They used to sell them, but she had to check. So you actually have to call ahead of time to see if they offer Trivex. UV coatings are basically a scam. The Poly, the Trivex, and all the mid and high index lenses have it built in, so you really don't need it. Um, the CR39, natively block something like 95 to 93 percent of UVA and UVB. The UV coating is kind of a scam. A lot of these glasses, the CR and the Trivex and the polycarbonate come with it. The anti-reflective uh, coating should be on every lens unless you're on a really tight budget. And not all anti-reflective coatings are equal. A lot of the premium ones not only come with a pretty nice hard coat on top, but a hydrophobic and have a warranty if they do scratch. And he could do this at triage somewhere. <laughs> and again, he's pecking away.